Ever since I was a child, I've had a weird fascination with spicy food. When I got a little bit older, I learned of the Scoville scale, which measured how hot a pepper was, but they guessed about how many capsaicinoids are in any given pepper. There are many capsaicinoids, but the most common is called capsaicin. In nature, capsaicinoids are the plant's natural defense from being eaten. When mammals eat peppers, the capsaicin activates on the TRPV1 channel. In mammals, this is extremely sensitive, and it causes the hotter burning feeling when eating something like a chili. Some people love this burning feeling, which usually is related to the release of endorphins that brings them back for more. When we look at the Scoville scale, we can see the level of concentration of capsaicinoids within the pepper. These are measured in SHU, or Scoville heat units. Starting with the bell pepper, which usually has no capsaicinoids, the most common ones are jalapenos starting at 8,000, cayenne peppers at 50,000, habaneros at 350,000, and ghost peppers came in right over a million, Carolina reapers, which hit around 2.2 million, and then finally capsaicin, which stands at 15 million. When researching this, however, I found that the Scoville scale has a chance to be extremely inaccurate. Instead, we should be using the American Spice Trade Association pungency units. They use chromatography to figure out the level of capsaicinoids within the pepper. I will link a paper below that talks about this in detail. But naturally, I want to pick a pepper within the higher range. This will allow me to extract more capsaicin. And I chose ghost peppers, and soon I will probably pick up some Carolina Reapers to try this again. So let's get started. All we need for this project is about 200 milliliters of an alcohol. I used ethanol, but you could also use methanol, isopropyl, or even acetone. Then the peppers we wish to extract from. It's important to note now that this extraction will extract more than just the capsaicin. It will also extract the beta carotene and I'm guessing some other capsaicinoids as well. The first thing we do is crush our ghost peppers into small pieces without turning them into dust. The reason we need moderately sized pieces is that if they are too small, the dust will bypass our cotton filter and go into our solution. This will make it harder to filter later, though we want them small enough because crushing our peppers up will increase the surface area, allowing a higher yield. After I crush up all the peppers in a bag, I then continue to process the peppers down with my pestle and mortar. It was about at this point I was wishing I had an extra coffee grinder. If you do use a coffee grinder, please be careful about the chili pepper dust that comes off. Let's just say, breathing it in is a less than pleasurable experience. Once peppers are grinded down, we will then need to fill our Soxlid extractor. There are many benefits to using a Soxlid extractor on this project, the main being that you need to use about a fifth of the solvent that you would for regular hot solvent washings. It also saves time on filtering at the end. We first put a piece of cotton in order to block the siphon tube at the bottom, followed by adding in our freshly ground ghost peppers. We will then need to push everything down as to remove as much open space as possible. Any open areas that the peppers are not semi-compact will create air bubbles, which can cause problems later on. We finish by putting another piece of cotton over the top of the peppers. Then we add our solvent. In this case, 200 milliliters of ethanol. I always prefer to work with ethanol over other alcohol halls like methanol or isopropyl. From here, we add our Soxlid extractor, followed by the condenser on top. We turn on our heating mantle and a light stirring. Within about 20 minutes, we can see the ethanol vapor being pushed from the distillation arm into the chamber start condensing and fall back down. When the warm ethanol condenses, it falls down and runs over the peppers. In turn, anything that is soluble in ethanol is absorbed and pulled to the bottom. We can see the red oil starting to form on the cotton. After a while, our siphon will start to equalize pressure and we will see the ethanol extract start to rise in the siphon tube. Before long, our siphon will get to the top and as it passes the bend, it will use suction and gravity to pull almost all of the ethanol from the chamber back into the boiling flask. This is one pass on the Soxlid extractor. Each pass takes around one hour to complete depending on the solvent, and we ran it for three passes. On our final pass, we see the ethanol in the siphon tube is almost clear. 
This is a good indication that the extraction is complete. Now in our boiling flask, we see that we have this nice red extract. The red actually comes from the beta carotene within the peppers. From here, we need to remove the ethanol from the solution, and to do this I set up a simple distillation. I want to recover as much ethanol as possible to be used for later. It is possible to just let the solution evaporate completely. I filled the water condenser, raised the heating mantle to the boiling flask, followed by turning on moderate stirring. Within about 10 minutes, we see the ethanol vapor start to come over. They will then be condensed back down into the liquid before dripping into our receiving flask. My goal is to cut, recover as much ethanol as possible while still leaving some. To know about how much ethanol I still have left to distill, I will check how much I have already distilled. And to do this, I just pull my receiving flask to see how much ethanol is in it. It looks like I have about 130 milliliters so far, and my goal was 170, which is about 76% of the ethanol I wanted to recover. Once the distillation is complete, I transfer everything into a small glass jar to continue the evaporation of the solvent. There are a number of ways to do this, and I choose constant hot water baths for about four hours. After the four hours, we still see the dark reddish oil at the bottom of the container. This is our mixture of capsaicin and beta carotene. Something important to note is that the capsaicin can burn skin similar to hydrochloric acid, and the burn can last for up to more than a day, so it's extremely recommended to use gloves, unlike what I am doing. At the end, we see our boiling flask was left with some other junk that got brought over with the extraction. All of this should be alcohol soluble, so if you are cleaning this, it shouldn't be too bad. Then we have our capsaicin extract, which personally I am giving to a friend and he said he will make it into a hot sauce for me, so I'll give an update when that happens. Finally, we have our dried peppers. It is really cool to see how much color got pulled from them. Thank you to my Patreon subscribers who support my videos. It really means the world to me. We can see a list of the videos that I'm working on here, and until next time, have a great rest of your day.